Okay, welcome to a new episode of Farm Like a Hero, folks. I'm Richard Perkins. Today I'm here with Matteo and Paola, who run Easy Day Farm in Italy. It's a six hectare farm started in 2016 and is based around a key line silver pasture system producing nuts, olives, fruits, berries, with a sheep and donkey herd moving in between, as well as a market garden focused on biointensive productions that really fosters soil building through cover crops and soil preparations, etc. And I know this couple have a great passion for experimenting with innovative methods and farm ready technologies. So I'm super excited for the conversation. Folks, thanks so much for joining us today. Thank you. Thank you. So you folks have, you've been there six years, building up a beautiful farm, having kids, managing kids and business and family. Tell us a bit what led you to setting up the farm? How's your journey been into this? How did you get where you are today? I start? Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, I met uh, Matteo while I was uh, thinking to Easy Day, which was uh, a dream uh, very, probably very different from what uh, it is now. Sorry for my English. <laughs> That's uh, totally but, fine. But yeah, let's say I turn in farming because, okay, I, I study as an agronomist. Mm -hmm. But uh, then I did uh, mountain leading until I broke my knee. And mm -hmm. I, I came back to my first dream, which was farming. And which is much better for the knees. <laughs> <laughs> Not really, but my knees were <laughs> pretty well while I, uh, I joined to my real dream. While I leading mm. mountain was something I like to do, but it, for me, there is a huge difference for, for, uh, between what you like to do and what you want to do mm. and uh, when i realized that i couldn't go on uh, leading people on the mountains uh, i just um, watched on my refrigerator uh, fri fridge fridge that there was uh, um, yeah there was uh, hanging there since uh, probably 10 years um a draw and it seems to be a permaculture draw and I still didn't know what permaculture was. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I realized it was uh, uh, something close to permaculture when I really watched at it. Uh, like, okay, that was my dream. I can come back to it. I have to change the life. And then I start to uh, follow a permaculture course and I met Matteo. So this is one of the cases uh, in which life uh, brings uh, to you things uh, that works uh, together when you yeah when you get the the right flow of the mm -hmm. life and and then uh, also i went to bank to ask for money but money came before the bank uh, entering the dream so i i can say many things uh, happened that it all know that was, conspired together yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, the choice was the right choice and so since now we didn't have a real depth, stability, okay, which is, uh, I think, uh, a good thing <laughs> compared mm -hmm. with our colleagues. And uh, yeah, Matteo has uh, the experience I didn't have. And, and that's it. And then uh, he came and uh, he can tell the rest of the story. He made me pregnant, <laughs> so. <laughs> I couldn't really join the farming. <laughs> no, I'm joking. But yeah, oh, yeah. He took, uh, I, I would say he he, he drive the, the 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 easy the idea more than mm. me. oh we drive it together. I mean, but but uh, yeah, he has the experience, so I didn't really uh, said something against what he said. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> what to do? I mean. Uh, and now we, yeah, we started with market gardening because uh, it allows us to connect with locals, with people, with the customers. And now we probably are going back to what we really like, which is more uh, connected with animal group and, uh, and stuff like that. Mm. Yeah. Mm. So really creating gardens to cash flow things while the perennials, obviously they take longer time and time to set up and yeah. Matteo, how was your journey into all this? 
Like, where did your interest begin and what was the pathway before you met? So, uh, uh, it was around six years old, six, seven years old, uh, probably in the, in the bathroom uh, <laughs> where we had, uh, well, my father used to keep uh, John Seymour's book on self-sufficiency. Mm -hmm. I was just looking at the pictures all the time and, and, and I really also didn't like much the, the school system, every, anything that, that was uh, felt like an institution. Mm -hmm. So then I started uh, <laughs> agricultural high school, it was a very good one with, uh, with a big farm, with uh, all sorts of things. It was conventional, but uh, there was rice, cereal, uh, like uh, silviculture, orchards, uh, gardens. We had the, the second best uh, soil lab of the region. So it, it was a very good school. And then uh, I just, but, but I always loved uh, the whole, the whole thing about agroecology, about permaculture and, 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 uh, and organic. And then uh, two days after the, the last uh, exam, I just left with the bike. And then for many years I've been traveling and working in different places in Europe, uh, Australia, and, and uh, Mexico, uh, just, just going to courses, going to farms, following those, uh, uh, those ones uh, uh, that wrote the books that I was reading about. Mm -hmm. So always keeping on starting doing courses, uh, but also putting into practice. Then I came back, I, I started a farm with uh, some other friends on, on another lake. And there we, we started a market garden and, and uh, broilers and, and uh, egg, uh, egg production. Uh, but then I, I met Paula and, uh, and I started again. <laughs> So that's that's basically my my story. Mm. Super nice. And so, what were key like key lines? Been a big thing for you, right? And agroforestry, like, is that things that you picked up in other countries when you were traveling? Uh yeah. Uh, I mean, all the elements uh, they they. They, they just came here and there uh, in, by, by visiting, by, by working to farms or following courses. So uh, the, key line, the key line in reality, I'm, I'm not an extremely, an extreme expert, uh, but uh, in the farm, we, we just have a, a, a small part, which is, uh, which is uh, mm, uh, a key line system. Uh, agroforestry, we are trying to, to implement it quite a lot uh, all over uh, the farm, even in the, in the market garden area, where normally everybody keeps uh, more or less uh, the whole uh, uh, land free from trees. Yeah. Yeah. So we are pushing a little bit hard. Uh, we know that many times we will not harvest what we should harvest. Uh, but still, as I told you, we are we for us it's very important to experiment uh, in order to to uh, to create uh, uh, some systems that that could be uh, used also by by other farmers. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, what was the at the starting point? What was on the land already? Like it seems like some of the tree systems were maybe established. Yeah. Could you describe like what did you have to start with six years ago? Like it was uh, olive trees, uh, quite a lot, like 250, and some olive trees are, are very big. They they yield. They can reach uh, 120, 130 kilos per tree of olives. Mm. Uh, so this we found it. They they were a bit abandoned. Uh, so little by little we had to reform them, reshape them. Uh, and I think uh, in the next years, we will increase more and more the production. And then there were abandoned um, uh, raspberries and uh, currants. And uh, apart from that, uh, yeah, I would say few fruit trees, old fruit trees here and there. Yeah. All mm -hmm. the rest, we, we, we started. So then how has that been for you, Paolo, to see, like, did you sort of, talk about ideas you were going to do or did you lay them out on mapping and paper and did you sort of see your dream coming alive in that i would say both 
we we draw something on map, uh, but uh, actually we also follow some, um, um, I say, help from government that uh, push up us uh, to do before, for example, the um, fruit trees, uh, orchards. And probably we would have done things different without this uh, money help and mm -hmm. funding. Um, what that limits do they put limits on what you uh, have to it, do the, yeah no okay it was a quite free uh, system of funding but uh, to to get in in the founded uh, farms we had to rush with something like uh, like culture and so probably we left um, we are later with structure for example which are a very huge part and i see now that uh, probably it has been a okay let's see mistake but it wasn't a mistake and i mean we are experienced we didn't have experience okay mm, if sure. now we would have uh, uh, structures probably um, things would be much easier uh, pro without probably let's say our ba uh, balance doesn't really um it's not really in a good position right now because we have a lot of sp uh, expenses expenses exp expenses that uh, are not in the production uh, system but are like uh, um a 50 rent rentals rent rentals house, house rentals yeah. uh, when we will have uh, now we have the permission to build uh, and we still have uh, something left <laughs> about the budget <laughs> so we we are in a good way to to resolve our problem but to solve uh, our pro problem but probably is the our hugest problem now is the house and uh, all the other structures that we need to be uh, competitive so we spend a lot of money to bring the things to be to um start to start start uh, to the Okay, to transform, transform uh, our first uh, production. So mm -hmm. we go very far, far to Rovereto and we will do it in our farm in the future. And uh, for example, we, we have uh, expensive rent. Uh, we have, um, I don't know, we don't have uh, where to, to put things in the right place for everything. So it will be very easier for us to have yeah, yeah. a place for everything. It, uh, the tractor. Outside. Is it that the whole farm is rented or like I didn't understand your story before how you happened on that place? Uh, actually, <laughs> okay, we build, we uh, bought the land, uh, it's our uh, property, just the uh, agricultural land. Ah, I see. Okay. It's bought, that's why we, we can plant uh, fruit trees and so on. Yeah. Uh, Sorry, uh, do you think it's a problem with children like this? Uh, I'm this how my life looks most of the time, so <laughs> it's fine. <Well>, it's fine. <laughs> uh, yeah, we, we could uh, uh, buy the land because uh, because of of my uncle, which is mm -hmm. American, and uh, he helped us before the bank. Let's say nice. I was looking for before this land. I was looking for a very close land, but smaller was about two hectares. Um, but the owner at the end didn't want to sell it, and that's why we 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 joined this new hugest project, <laughs> which was much bigger with another friend of mine that uh, she didn't uh, join at the end, but uh, I could because my uncle. I mean, with yeah. my uncle, and uh, but as I was looking at the the aerial photo that people, I guess, will see on the thumbnail. So there's no, is it like ruins that are there? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. But, uh, our property yet. Yeah.